So, just before we go straight to um, coming here and, and and what that was what that was like for you, I just want to ask: in that time of listening to God and getting loads of um, different people speak, um, what God was saying to you and give you pictures and say different things, were you guys? Did it feel like you were wrestling a little bit with with God? It was was it something where you were like, oh God, is this really something that that you're saying? Do we really have to do this, or was it quite an easy? Um, oh great, if if this is what you're saying, that's that's fine. That's that's easy. How easy how easy was it to follow what you thought God was saying? Not well. It, <laughs> there was, there's two sides to this. There was a sense that we never had so much direction from God. But then the cost of that was the flip side of it. So we were convinced God was saying initially to, to step out in faith. And then when Keely saw the advert for the role here, and then she had this strong sense that the Lord was saying, this is the place. We came down here. We, we had never been to this part of the country before. We, we'd been one actor. We'd been to Canterbury on a weekend. <laughs> and we, I think we'd driven to Whitstable for an afternoon on a very grey winter's day and stood on the beach for 10 minutes and then got back in the car. But we didn't actually know. So we had, no, we had no idea of this place or this landscape. And so when we came down here, it felt like a very strange land to us. It felt very different. And it felt very costly. There were a lot of tears. Um, we didn't know... More from me, obviously. ...the cost of leaving uh, our friends and family, coming out of our movement, everything we'd known we were leaving behind. Our reputation. It was that sense where God calls Abraham, you know, leave your father's house and go to the land I will show you. It was that real sense that we were in the in-between time. And that's very, very scary because all your points of reference you're leaving behind. A guy called Donald Miller once talked about, you know, if you row across a lake, there comes a point when, you, when one shoreline disappears and you can't see the other one. And it's in that in-between time when things get scary. And, uh, and it felt like we were doing that. We were in that in-between time. So we were leaving behind all our points of reference. And we were going to this new land that God was going to show us. And we were convinced he would show us. But it's, it's very scary in those times. because we had, we had a picture. We went to the NLC prophetic uh, appointments. And, and you go to a room and people sit around. We're trying to do this in, in Riverside in the future where you go. People don't know your situation. They pray for you. They have words. And this lovely old guy said to us, I see you on some white water in a canoe. And then suddenly you're going over a waterfall and you're falling, you're falling, you're falling. And we just looked at each other and thought, that's exactly what we feel like. He said, you hit the bottom, you go under the rapids, but then you bob back up again. And all these people are waiting to receive you. And uh, he, says, he said, it's okay. But at that point in time, we were just falling, falling, falling. We couldn't do anything apart from... We didn't know anything about here at that point. No, just lean into what God was saying and trust him that he had something the other side of the falling for us. I would echo that. I think it's it's often both of those things, Jake. I think there's like a compelling part of following God that, of course, we wanted that dynamic adventure with God. And, and when God is speaking to you so much, and again, for us, it had to be as big as that, as many words, because we would not have given up what we gave up without absolute assurance. Because then in the hard times, you have to lean back on those words and say, you know, God absolutely sent us here and it was God's will. And that's why when it's tough, we hold on to that. So we needed all of that and God fully knew that. But it certainly doesn't make it easy for me, especially. There was many, many tears. There was grieving. There was wrestling with God, you know, which means I was one day, you know, excited. And yes, we can do this. The next day I was sobbing, saying, God, I'm not prepared to give this up. I'm not prepared to leave my boys um yeah. where they are so it was very much up and down exhausting emotionally for me especially because simon's much more steady i'm sure you all know that if you know him he's much more doesn't mean he didn't feel the ups and downs but he was much more steady whereas i could be really low one day and then really up the next and then really down for a few days and again that refines your faith in a way because you have to keep pushing back into god because he's the only one really who can bring you comfort you know simon would say things but it wasn't enough. I needed the arms of God around me to say to me, I will get you through this. Whatever I'm asking you to do, if you do it with me, you know, there will be blessing in it. So there was massive wrestling, um, but beautiful times in that too, where I got closer to God and I definitely felt his leading more than ever before in our lives. But yeah, it certainly wasn't, yay, great, oh, we're off. It may have been for some people, but it wasn't for us. It was very much trusting, wrestling, pushing back, pulling forward. Yeah, without being, without being gross, it was, a, it was a birthing process. So, yeah. you know, births are amazing, wonderful, painful, traumatic. Uh, messy. All of it messy. It was all of those things really yeah. in the mix. 
Wow. That, yeah, that sounds like quite a, uh, a journey going It was to epic. That it would have been an epic film. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so, so then let, let's go back to where we were a couple of minutes ago. So you, then this, this post came up at what was this limbo between Tanking, Tant, all my days I can't speak, Tankerton Evangelical and um, Riverside Church. So, so that post came up. Tell, tell me about um, how you guys then came into, into your role at the, at the church. Well, it was actually, it was me who first saw the advert and God often speaks to me first. I think he has to really to prepare me. Um, I, I was just like, I don't even know what, what pastors do when they feel like God is calling them somewhere else. Because we felt like God was actually asking us to step out of the vineyard movement for something. I was like, okay, maybe you have to look for a job. So I typed in probably christian pastor jobs i honestly had never done this in my life and i think it was the new the new wine network um magazine came up online and i started just scrolling through just looking and this little this little tiny insignificant advert with just a few lines honestly th there was loads and loads of pastor jobs obviously all over the country and the world but this little advert i was just reading it it didn't say anything amazing um, about anything but something within me and this is how often how God speaks to me something deep inside me just kind of flipped and I was just like oh that was that was weird and I was almost like my eyes were open the eyes of my heart were opened to this little advert amongst all of the others and then there was like an awakening that's all I can say um, and so I remember Simon the boys were around it was actually our anniversary and the boys were around because they didn't all live with us and I just said, oh, there's this little advert here for this church in a place called Whitstable again. Didn't really know where that was. And I read it out to them and they were all like, what? Don't be ridiculous. Because it just, it, because we were city people, um, had led a big church. This just seemed so far off from us. I think the boys were trying to protect us. And But anyway, that happened. And, and even Simon poo pooed it. He didn't really listen. But over the course of the next few days, God wouldn't let me drop it and so I started to investigate and then I asked Simon to which you eventually did didn't you I did yeah we started to look at the opportunities here and, and I guess started to say okay God what are you saying here so that began a process in us of of praying about it again for quite a while um asking God whether this was something he wanted to, us to apply for which it became obvious that he did. Um, the role was just for one person, but we'd always ministered together. And we obviously believe that women have um, the the right and the authority to lead. And that the Vineyard Movement is, is, is all about that. If women feel they want to lead, they've never, they've never been held back. So for us, it wouldn't have been right for us to just come and it be Simon's role. So we kind of put that out as a query to the leadership team here and said would you consider both of us applying not like for double the money or anything but we would come as a couple and are you open to that and we got a reply back which is kind of our first little test I suppose that yes they would would welcome us applying as a couple they'd never considered it but yes go for it they said and and actually 12 months before they had changed the constitution which is kind of the rules that the church was built on the foundation which meant that women could lead and they'd already been through that as a church. So you can see how God was preparing the way for us to come because it would have been an absolute no if it was just all about mm. Simon. Um, that wouldn't have been the right fit for us, but God knew that would come and he allowed the team here to be open to that. So that was like a little green light for us from God to say, OK, go for the next step. So, yeah, that started the process. It was a very long process. It was six months of us applying and questions and more questions and of course we were both having to answer all the questions um and that culminate well actually we came down to pray didn't we we're cutting a very long story short yeah. you'd have to come and talk to us about it we came down prayer walked the area before we applied and, and again wanting more words from god wanting 50 words and this and that because it was like we have to know this is you god because yeah. once we were in we were going to be all in and we did get that and we did apply and then um then in the July, we came down for interviews. And again, for us, we put our house on the market. We sold our house because we had such a belief that this was what God wanted. We didn't apply anywhere else. We didn't have lots of options. This was our option. And if this didn't come off, 
I don't think we knew what we were going to do because we had such faith that this is where God was calling us. It was like that weight behind us of God's presence saying this is yours. And so we did come with actually a bit of fear, obviously, that what if we're wrong? Because you always have that. What if that's us? But actually there was more of that. There was a confidence that this was our job. It was our assignment. It was our next role. Had no idea really what we were doing, but uh, except that this is what God was calling to and the rest is history, I guess, you know, by the September, they had to have um, a vote about it. And But by the September of that year, so it was a, a long, you know, felt like a very long six or seven months, we were um, officially offered the positions. And then within six weeks, we'd moved down because the house had already sold and God had prepared us. So, yeah, it was it was massive, but um, exciting because to, to live with that adventure with God, there's nothing better really to know that you're following wholeheartedly after God um, and that's what I'd, I'd encourage all of you listening but especially the young people you know choose today to live for Jesus because choosing to live a life that doesn't have Jesus in it or to kind of be making your own rules and Jesus is an add-on from our experience that's not that's not the best way the best way is to go all in with God and to say you know whatever your plans are for us for me I want to do that and I want to follow, I want to be obedient. And in that you have that kind of protection and blessing, knowing that you're in the Father's hands. And I'm not saying there's not hard times, there is definitely hard times when you're following God. But knowing that you're doing it with him is the best feeling in the world. And we wouldn't be anywhere um, without God. And mm. we've had many challenges, but God has been so faithful to us. And we're here and yeah, we've nearly been here for five years now and it is our home and we love it we love riverside we love the people and our heart yeah, and, those, and those friends in that picture who were yeah. waiting for us when we bobbed up uh, they were all here they those friends that god had shown us in that picture of us going over the waterfall those friends are all here and they were waiting for us in the lord so i think again as kitty said for you young people if you really want to know what god's got for you push into him because he wants to guide you he wants to lead you so if you're unsure you know seek seek he says seek and ask and knock and all those things about pushing into what god has for you uh, and if he's not speaking say god i really need to hear your voice on this i really want to hear you and big decisions need big guidance and that's what we pushed into for god we needed it almost written in the butter in the fridge we needed it written in the sky we needed it as in many ways as possible because it was a massive decision but god wants to lead us and he wants to guide us and he wants to take us to those lands that he will show us and uh, but we have to go through this journey of faith leaving one shoreline while we head for the other. So that's, that's really important. And it's not always big things like go and be a missionary in another country. God wants to guide us all the time in our day. And I don't mean what clothes to wear, but, you know, if we're listening to the Holy Spirit, you I know... I always ask the Lord what clothes to wear. OK, you might do. I probably choose my own clothes. Yeah. Um, I have to choose Simon's as well, so... It's... You, I was, you, you tells me. I thought it was the Lord. <laughs> yeah. OK. No. I'll um, wait for the voice to tell me, Jake. It's obviously not God's voice. It's Keely's voice. It's my voice. Um... <laughs> So no, the Holy Spirit wants to guide us all the time, you know, with who to speak to, who to pray for, who to have that conversation with and learning to live like that um, with the Holy Spirit whispering in your ear. And if you can practice doing that now, you know, it's never too early to start listening to the Holy Spirit and, and just having a go. So we'd encourage you if you feel and I know some of you have been doing this, which is great. And um, if you feel that God has given you a picture or a word or a piece of scripture and you think, I think it's for that person over there, have the courage to go and share it with them. Because what's the worst that can happen? They can just smile and say, thank you. It may mean nothing, but it might be absolutely life changing for them. All of those words that people gave to us, some people gave them really tentatively and they'd never shared a word. But they were so significant because they formed this bigger picture of what God was doing. So, yeah. Follow hard after God and, and choose today to listen to the Holy Spirit and that say, you know, what do you want me to do? What are you saying to me? In all the little decisions, involve God. So you have mentioned this, the story of coming to um, Riverside, but so much has happened since you guys have been at Riverside. Um, moving to a new building. I'm, I mean, there's loads. I'm not going to go through every little thing that, that's happened, but... One of the things that's happened is the church has become a vineyard. Um, and as you said, you, you moved back to the vineyard and, and when you went to the leadership conference, um, Debbie said to you, oh, I knew you'd be back. So so tell us about how that, how that came about. And it seems like it wasn't originally the plan 
So, so what happened? No, it wasn't. The, the TEC or Riverside was an independent evangelical church, so it had always been independent. It had had affiliations with um, other sort of movements, but there was no, it was always independent. And I think when we came and we got to know Riverside and got to chat to the leaders, we there was this sense that they wanted to be part of a family, a larger family, and um, they'd been exploring that tentatively, uh, but uh, there hadn't been anything sort of finalised or, or any sort of connections made. And then they put it on hold, didn't they, while they, they put it on hold. for a new senior pastor. And well, we said, well, the only family that we know is Vineyard. And um, and we said, we obviously, we've got a relationship with the Vineyard. We've got lots of friends in the Vineyard. And uh, This was a couple of years into it. But the last thing here. we wanted it to be was yeah. it's a fait accompli that you now become a Vineyard church. So we spent a long time, about a year, journeying with the church. We, we invited people who we knew in the Vineyard to come and speak talk to the leaders, explain a bit about what Vineyard was about from their perspective, uh, so they weren't just hearing it from us. Um, the Vineyard have produced some very helpful little booklets, uh, six booklets around some of the distinctives that Key talked about, and we bought loads of those and just gave them out to our lead and said, go away and read these over the summer, see what you think. And really, we just tried to let the thing organically sort of take root and grow up because we didn't want this to be a top-down, you know, obviously it's the Vineyard you need to become part of because God had said to us, come out of the Vineyard, go to Whitstable, go to the land I will show you. So there's all the sense of we were just trying to keep in step with the spirit. But as we as we exposed the church to, to vineyard people and vineyard values, there was this overriding sense of people said, well, this is us. This is what we this is what we feel. And what off- was lovely, actually, was that because the, there's, a, there's like a language of the vineyard that I guess because, as you've now realised, we've been in it for so long, we were just acting how we act, not really thinking vineyard and when when they read the booklets and the, the vineyard values they were like well this is how you talk this is what we've been doing the last couple of years and we kind of without knowing brought that into the church and used the language of everyone gets to play and you know we'd been imbibing those values into the church without really realizing we're doing it so when they read them and when we talked about them, they were like well this is us anyway this isn't anything that we're not doing it and it kind of all fit together and there was a synergy and and a, and a yes kind of rose up from the leadership like this is the family we need to belong to so it was like they were they had to ask us in the end to bring them into the vineyard we did not want it to to look like because it certainly wasn't on our hearts to do that in any way we were trying to secretly bring them in and so we were quite shocked and it was it was a wonderful ending yeah. to that kind of circle if you like because we gave it up, never thinking we'd be back. And it, there was a grieving process and a loss, but God allowed that to settle and then chose to bring us all back into that family. And it, and it has been wonderful since. And yeah, just the things that we're part of now, it's, it was just really beautiful of God to do that and kind. Yeah, and some people had said to us, did you always come down here with the idea of making us a vineyard? And we said, well, resounding no, because there's a much easier way to start a vineyard church than to go to an independent evangelical one and and, yeah. and, and bring it into the vineyard, yeah, sure. you know. But we all we tried to do was keep in step with the Spirit. And God obviously had a, a bigger plan, a bigger mandate. And uh, and now that we're part of that family, we've still got that lovely freedom that we had before to be expressed, God, as we see fit in the area. But we've now got the support and the connection uh, of a larger family uh, in the UK, which is also lovely to have. And the resources and the, and the people and the blessing. And obviously Ellie spoke a couple of weeks ago and we've got that, that larger sort of umbrella uh, over us now, which is really good to have. That's great. It seems like you guys have been on, like, like we were saying earlier, on such a journey. There could be a Netflix series about the journey that you guys have been in over the last 30 years. And there's years so of, much of, more. <laughs> yes, this is just the and, highlights. And I'm sure we're going to hear more about, at different points, about about your guys' testimonies and things that God's... Um, said and done through you guys but just to to close this sofa talk i'd love to ask if you have one thing each if you could each say one thing that god has taught you during this journey during your time in church leadership well i think i've kind of sewn it in i'm very passionate about um following God wholeheartedly and not being lukewarm. It talks in Revelation about being a lukewarm Christian and how God finds that really difficult, whether you're not kind of hot um, and you're not cold, you're just in the middle. And I think that's quite offensive to God. So 
I would encourage everybody, the one thing I've learned is to try your hardest, doesn't happen all the time, but to follow hard after God, which means be fully in or decide that you're fully out. Don't be lukewarm and play around with God because the, the best way to live is to be all in, to be red hot, following hard after God, listening to him, doing what he asks you to do and knowing that you're in that kind of safety with God. And there is an adventure to have if you want to do that with God. There is always fun and adventure and I would just encourage all of you to obey and listen to God and choose to be totally all in and red hot for Jesus. Yeah I was quoted that guy Donald Miller earlier on he said the best stories make the best lives and we love to read stories about people who have adventure and step out and go to and do and do do things and we love those stories love to read them watch them hear about them but that those stories we can live those stories in our own life. We can make courageous choices. We can make bold choices. We can choose to step out in faith. We can choose to go to new lands that God wants to show us. And so God wants us all to live those stories, not just to read them or watch them, you know, vicariously look, live someone else's life. He calls us to live a life of adventure and courage. And uh, like Kitty said, if we can do that, but I think the second thing to add to that is to do it with people, with friends, to do it together to do it in relationship, that's so important. God doesn't call us to be uh, lone individuals or, you know, so many times we see in films that, you know, you, you have the, the, the hero or the individual, but actually God calls us to be together and to work as teams and to work with friends and to work collectively. And often, you know, one of the first things we need to realize is we only have a certain set of gifts and other people have gifts that complement us. And the reason Key and I minister together is because we've got complementary gifts. We, 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 we help each other become better uh, in serving God and you'll have friends and family and people around you who can help you be a better you so it's about doing it with other people it's about serving together and, and, and taking those hills together and really pushing into God together so uh, yeah don't do it alone do it with people do it with friends do it with team and just to say as well um, I'm not actually very old Simon is um, but when we started all of this we were young and and we are passionate about young people having opportunities to to follow God but also to lead and so that comes out of that interior life that you're building with God and so when we talk about following God you need to as young people be reading your Bible you know listening to worship and cultivating that for yourself so that you can come into church come into the meetings and be leaders you know there is so much potential in all of you and we want you all to become Amen. what god wants you to be not a shadow of that but fully alive fully on fire and fully living the lives that god wants you to be and we are behind you all the way we want to push you to be greater than we are to to lead further than we can lead and so you know from simon and i as your pastors we want to encourage you to really go for it with God. You know, we will come out of this time and things will return to a normal, um, like we used to know, hopefully. And, you know, just believe that there is more to come. There is great things to come. And we want you to be in that story, headlining it um, for Riverside. Amen. Amen. Great. So this is the end of the two part series on um, Simon and Keeley and their time in church and talking about the Vineyard Church. So, Keeley, will you pray for us to finish this time together? Heavenly Father, thank you for being with us on the Sofa Talks. Thank you that we've had the opportunity to share a bit of our story and how you've led us. Thank you that you brought us to Whitstable to serve the people here and all along the coastlands. And God, I ask that every young person will be um, stirred and excited by what we've shared and something in them will start to grow that they will believe that they will have a story too that they have a purpose and a mission from you so God even in this lockdown time when things aren't right and they're not normal would you bless every young person fill their hearts God I pray that they will still feel close to you minister to them Lord speak to them encourage them and Lord I pray that they will pursue you wholeheartedly, that they won't live a lukewarm life that's neither hot nor cold, but they will run hard after you and they'll be courageous and bold to step into the story that you have for them and they will live their life fully for you, Jesus. And we ask this in your precious name. Amen.